integrated compositor. We access those tools just by coming down here and selecting either the FX tree, the FX viewer, or the FX operator selector. Uh, what I've gone ahead and done is created a custom layout where I've embedded all of those tools directly in the interface and uh, got rid of the side toolbars so that I have a nice clean workspace for doing my compositing. Now here what you can see are all the different operators, all the different nodes that you can use in your composite, whether it be painterly effects, uh, image adjustment, things like color corrections, pixel parsers, uh, your actual composite node. So let's just go ahead and do one of these. We're going to click composite over and this will apply the over node into the uh, onto the FX tree. Now if I just middle click on the interface, it uh, just lays the uh, the node on the uh, the FX tree like this, but if I middle click on the background first, then middle click on the foreground, I can then click that right on the uh, FX tree and you can see all the links are made for me automatically. So to do that again, just middle click, middle click, middle click, and maybe we're going to just drop in the alpha channel like this, and lastly let's go ahead and add that snow like that. So you can see it's very easy to use, and if I go to my view switcher here, you can see that's completely integrated with my 3D environment. So as my 3D scene moves, so does my composite. The FX tree has a couple other features in here which you might not expect. Uh, one is this one here, which allows me to bring in a texture map from my scene. So what I'm going to do is just go here and get a new tree. You can have as many of these trees in your scene as you like. Uh, go back to Clips and select Ship Hull, and this is going to bring the texture map in that's on the... Uh, on my little spaceship here. So let's go ahead and draw a render region. And I'm also going to switch to my operator selector here and select a uh, image adjust color correction node. I'm just going to pop this in to the middle here. This is actually the output and then basically the input of your texture map. So everything that you do in between here will get updated by Mental Ray, by the rendering engine, and uh, recognized by XSI. So let's go ahead and link that up. And if I open this up now, let's also take a look at this in the viewer. So there's the texture map, and if we go ahead and make a change here, you'll see that not only will it update here, but it'll also update in the rendering. Now this takes a little bit longer now because I'm recording this movie, but generally this is uh, almost instantaneous. So you can see any effect that you can apply uh, with the compositor, you can now apply to your texture maps. Another one of the great features of the FX tree is the ability to use XSI's passes uh, integrated right into your composite. So if we take a look here, we can see that I've broken my scene up into several different passes, and I'm just going to stay on the one uh, called Ship, and we'll close this up. And we'll go here to my pull-down in my FX tree, and you can see all of those passes are available here. So I can go ahead and click on this one, and it's going to bring in a blank clip, but it knows that once I render this scene, that this will actually fill up with a new picture of the spaceship. So let's go ahead and render this. So we'll say Render Current Pass, and it should, uh, should just render one frame. We're going to launch Mental Ray. And as soon as this gets finished, what it will do is write this to the uh, to the hard drive. Now this is just going to be one frame, but it could very well be a series of frames. And if I go back to frame one, there you can see the, uh, the spaceship. We have a nice icon for this now. And this new one is incorporated right into the scene. So you can directly composite before you actually even render something. Uh, you can composite that in your scene. So another great, uh, great bit of technology inside the FX tree.